So I'm delighted to say joining us to look ahead to Thursday night's Europa Conference League opener against Danish side Viborg is Henry Nichols from footballindenmark.com. Henry, brilliant to have you joining us on the show. Before I go anywhere else, talk about any football whatsoever, how does an Englishman like you find himself in charge of a Danish football website of all things? We had some... Uh, we had some different countries and different fans of different teams to get in touch with last season on the Europa League run. Um, but uh, an entire platform dedicated to just Danish football, there's got to be an intriguing tale behind that. Yeah, it's a bit of a mad one, really. I mean, I've uh, I, I've spent my whole life watching Premier League football. I've uh, had an Arsenal season ticket for you know over 25 years. So I've watched a lot of Premier League football and about... Just for um, everyone at home. Boo! <laughs> yeah, yeah put that aside for for one yeah, moment yeah. but um but uh yeah for, um about four uh four and a bit years ago i was uh i was just on youtube and up popped up a, a documentary about a player called thomas delaney and um oh, yeah. it looked, re looked really interesting i had no idea who this player was um i assumed he was a, a british player um uh he's not he's a danish player and it, yeah. it was a documentary about him as uh uh fc copenhagen captain uh coming into his last season and just watching that i got really sort of um excited about the league it seemed like there were there was you know big atmosphere there was uh, the quality of the of the football was good and everywhere i looked there was no coverage in english um and i'm quite a stubborn person and uh i really wanted to learn more and when i found out there was there was no one covering it i sort of uh set about trying to understand it and uh over time i, I realized there were a few other people in my position who who wanted to know more about this league i think it, it's got quite a a big history of being a league that you know um develops big talents uh and and has some big teams and some big derbies and so yeah that, that's how i kind of uh came about creating the website and the twitter and uh yes it's, it's been great um being able to to share that and and everyone in denmark's been super uh willing to to, to help me learn more i think they're, they're a bit like you a bit sort of shocked that there's someone from england who's so into mm. the, the domestic league Fair play, fair play. The Twitter is uh, football in DK. Uh, yeah. If you want to go over, head over and check uh, check out Henry's Henry's platform. Yeah, I mean that it's often. So, I mean, I work in football for a living or whatever, and I think I I love football. And then I meet someone like you, and I think I don't love football as much as this person. <laughs> <laughs> I I do not love football enough to uh, to dedicate the untold amount of um, or the no doubt. Ton, the tens and tens and hundreds and hundreds of hours you've put in uh, to build a platform, but fair play. So Henry, um, Viborg, and normally in situations like this, we do an opposition view every week. Obviously, um, with the Premier League sides, it's different. Last season was a bit of a new one for me and Jonesy, I do the podcast with new teams, new countries, different things to learn about different sides. But normally I'd, I'd do a bit of research first, um, do a little bit of reading up, as is the professional way. But this time around, I thought, no, nah, I'm going to put myself in, in the listener shoes here. Uh, and hopefully I then ask the questions that everyone listening at home uh, will be asking because I, like many others, had never heard of Viborg until a few weeks ago when it turned out we could get them or a team from the Faroe Islands um, in this round of the Conference League in the playoff leg as it is. So I haven't done any research whatsoever this time round, but rather than you thinking that's just really unprofessional on my part, it was a deliberate ploy uh, in an attempt to make the podcast better. Um I don't know where where does one start then? So um, you're talking to a, a West Ham fan, just like the thousands that listen to this podcast every week will be not having a clue, a completely blank canvas. Talk to me about Viborg first of all. What do I need to know about Viborg first? Yeah. So um, f firstly, I think the, the the Conference League gets quite sort of short shrift from uh, Premier League fans, but I think that it's throwing up storylines like this is exactly why it's so uh such a great competition and why i enjoyed it so much last season so yeah viborg is a city with only uh a population of about forty thousand. so i'm already um, pronouncing it wrong that's that's <laughs> item one to note it's not viborg after all right got viborg yeah. yeah that's lesson number one i didn't want to say anything but yeah no um, no, no no happy to be corrected go on 
they're, they're one of the oldest teams in in Denmark. Uh, they, they've been around since the late 1800s. Uh, so, given um, you know a team like FC Copenhagen, for example, that that you're probably more familiar with, they only came to ex- existence in 1992. I think that tells you kind of this wow. is like a, a very old school team. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, this is really only their second time ever playing in Europe. And uh, they they were just promoted to the Superliga, which is the, the sort of Danish equivalent of the Premier League. They were only promoted there last season. Right. And they really took the league by storm. Uh, it, it, it would have been the story of the season if it hadn't been for the fact that the other promoted team actually finished third. So did even better. But yeah. um, they, they, came, they came into the, the league. Where and they did were... Viborg finish, sorry? So last they, fin- year? they finished seventh. So oh, right, um, okay. One of the interesting things about the Superliga actually is that after 22 games, the league splits into two. So you then have the championship group of the top six and the relegation group of the bottom six. And in order to keep the relegation teams interested, they they put a little carrot, which is if you finish top of the relegation group, you go into this playoff where you play Mm. the fourth or fifth place team from the championship group and the winner in a one-off game uh, gets to uh gets the play the final place in europe right okay, um, yeah. and there was a, a big story going into this so but basically the manager who got Viborg promoted um lars fries he uh he got poached by another team mid-season and uh as uh fate would have it the uh the european playoff was uh Viborg against lars fries's new team and uh, Viborg won on penalties. It was a very dramatic. And I think it's the first time that a relegation team's ever won that playoff. So right. um, it got them into Europe after this sort of fantastic season. And, and they didn't even finish in the top half. And they didn't finish in the top half. Play. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, th- th- so this is this is a real kind of David versus Goliath clash. You know, I think the bookies have um, Viborg uh, at about 9% to win on Thursday. So right. it, it, it's it, it's going to be um, it's going to be a huge upset if they can if they can pull something off but um but yeah the last season they were really a breath of fresh air they um we'll maybe get into talking about some of the uh some of the individual players uh mm. but i think that by the end of it they were deserving of that place you know to win the playoff uh, in the fashion they did and with you know a squad with a, a value of 8 million euros according to transfer market and just sort of by comparison west ham's tr- uh, squad values 362 million so you just mm. get you get an idea of the kind of uh the size of the the gap between the two teams to be fair half of that is Declan Rice but uh yeah <laughs> I see where you're coming from so um it was a 5-1 aggregate win over Faroe's team B36 that got Viborg there Viborg there excuse me in the first place um what sort of uh, you know that, that sounds fairly comfortable um I'm not certain the quality of the uh of the the domestic teams in the Faroe Islands, not amazing, I wouldn't have thought. Um, but what do West Ham fans, you know, what they got to look out for, like style of play wise, or what can they expect Thursday? Yeah, well, I, I think that Vibor play um, uh, a really kind of, at least domestically, they play a really uh, intriguing style of football. So they play very high tempo, uh, primarily they're a counter attacking team. Um they're very good at pressing high up the pitch, uh, which should sort of put them in a uh, good, good position um, with a Premier League team. And this season, at least, they're, they're very direct. They've played the most accurate long balls this season. Um, they, they tend to play a 4-3-3 uh, and focus a lot on um, attacking overlaps, particularly at left back. So that their left back is actually their best player um, by some distance, a guy called uh, Christian Sorensen. Um, he was the only outfield player in the league last season to play 90 minutes of every single league game. And he created 118 chances. Uh, and just to sort of put that in perspective, um, the next highest place player in the whole league for chance creation created 73. So he's he everything goes through him. Uh, he's overlapping down the left. Um he wears a num- he wears number seven. So uh for a defender, that sort of tells you uh, about his kind of attacking intent. I think. Viborg's the first place where he's actually played as a left back. He's traditionally played higher up the pitch. And What's yeah, his name? Is, sorry, Christian Sorensen. Right. Uh, he, he's got a blonde man bun, so you can't miss him. <laughs> um, and yeah, he's uh, in five games in the league this season. He's already got two goals and three assists. So he's he's the danger man. Um, I, I shouldn't really be giving the game away, but hopefully, uh, 
Hopefully the, the West Ham staff aren't listening to this. Or yeah, you'd hope you'd hope Moise you would uh, <laughs> would know about that already, wouldn't you? Um Henry, you, you said earlier on uh, just off air that you, you went over to Denmark. You've actually seen V Borg play recently. So the as far as the fans go, the the club, um obviously West Ham large fan base born out of the uh, the ducks in East London, a bit of a working class club, widely considered. What um you know, what, as far as V Borg go. What's the? You said it was a forty thousand uh, populous town, so not huge. But what are the fan base like? What are the fans like? And uh, is can West Ham fans expect a decent following on Thursday? Yeah. So I I, I haven't been to the the city itself, uh, so I can't give you uh, can't give you that perspective. But um, I know that uh, I, I know that it's traditionally so, so they they do a, or they. Um, farm a lot of mink in De- in Denmark, uh, mm. and I think Viborg is, that's like their biggest, uh, like the biggest part of their economy. I think, at least I've been told. Um, in, in terms in terms of uh, supporters, yeah, they um, uh, th- this is this is you know arguably uh, well apart from the cup final, perhaps this is w- one of the biggest games in their history. So uh, I know that lots of them are going to be coming over for this. Um, traditionally. They get an attendance of about five thousand, uh, about fifty fifty percent capacity of their stadium. But you know, as a percentage of the city, uh, that's pretty significant. Mm, uh, but yeah, I expect yeah. that, that I expect that will be full for the for the return leg. Um, the the game that I went to over the the weekend was was in uh, Norgeland, and uh, Vibor brought probably, uh, if I'm estimating, maybe one hundred and fifty fans or something like that. Mm. So. Um, n- 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 not like uh, the the size of traveling support that like an FC Copenhagen or a Bronby would have, uh, but at the same time, I, I I know the fans are really excited about this game, and I know that yeah they'll be traveling over in numbers. Yeah, fair play, fair play. So uh, you you guess it, with the golf in in sides, it may be more of a, a sort of like a damage limitation thing. Do you think, or you know, not to, but certainly this Thursday. Is sort of just stay in the tie approach. Will it be from from Viborg and and hope they can get them back to to their stadium? Yeah, I th- I think because there's no away goals anymore. There's there's um you know you can approach a game like this uh with, with that mentality uh, without it costing you too much. Um, that they, they've got a, a a big sort of six foot four striker called J Roy Grot, um a, a, a Dutch guy, um. He misses a lot of big chances, uh, yeah. but he's a um, uh, he, he's a, a really sort of big physical presence. And I think that uh, for a game like this, that will be really important to have someone who's able to kind of bruise the the defenders back because the the, the quality of opposition is certainly going to be um, levels above anything that people have faced recently. Um, but I expect them to to stick to their formation. They 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 stuck quite rigidly to that um, all the way through last season and this one. Uh, and and I expect them to use that long ball uh, uh, w- w- with a, a bit more um, effectiveness and 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 try and get Sorensen into the game. But yeah, I I think if they can come through this, um, it sounds bad, but even even just being a goal down, I think could give them uh, could give them something to. To, to aim for and hey you never know uh the season in denmark starts a bit earlier so they've they've had a bit more of a run up to this uh they've had obviously that uh four european games already so that they are coming into this um with a, a bit more uh uh tarmac under their team bus yeah. i guess yeah 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 sure fair enough fair enough well uh what um obviously we'll, we'll hope to have a chat with you again before the before the return leg um it, it just numbers wise, then I appreciate you sort of said it's going to be a, a, a big one. Are we, is, is it sort of a, a 500 sort of a reasonable expectation um, for an away showing, given that it is the biggest game in or one of the biggest games in their history? I well, I this is a complete guess from, from my perspective, but I, I, I would I'd be thinking even maybe a little more than that. Um, oh, right, okay, you know, there, there's lots of uh, lots of flights over to um. Uh, to London, you know, it's a big stadium. Um, ho- hopefully, the rail strikes don't uh, put too many people off. So, yeah, it'd be, mm. it'd be really nice to see a big turnout there. And I'm, I'm hoping to get down to the game myself and, and maybe chat to some fans beforehand um, uh, and kind of uh, get a real view from them as to what it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. And uh, so, well, just last couple, then, how are they doing in the league at the moment? Um, and who's in charge? The manager you mentioned, the one who's gone. Uh, who's the, who's the manager at the moment? 
Yeah, so the the, the new manager is uh, Jakob Fries. So exactly the same surname as the uh, outgoing manager. <laughs> is that but... the Smith of Denmark? Is it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's not. I, I don't think they're any relation. Yeah, um, right. uh, so so yeah, and th- this season they've th- they they've been really good. I think they've um, won three, lost two, and even the game they lost, they were you know. The, the, it was a pretty even contest. I think they were pr- probably unlucky. They missed a few chances uh, through, through that striker grot. Um, mm. And so, yeah, I think they've, um, I, I, I kind of predicted this season, they might fall off a little bit with the, you know, the extra European games and, uh, you know, they lost a, a um, lost quite a key player over the summer, one of their centre backs um, that got poached by the old manager, of course, always yeah. the way, uh, but they've, no, that they, they've been impressive this season. I can't remember precisely where they are. It might be, might be fifth or something, but, um, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of the kind of big teams this season have, uh, failed to live up to expectations so far and, and V-Borg have really kind of, um, hit the ground running. Yeah. Yeah. Fair play. Fair play. Well, look, Henry, we really appreciate you coming on the show. And, uh, I thought, uh, I normally have trouble getting a Brighton fan on uh, for the opposition view. They're the hardest Premier League one. Um, so we've got that this weekend. And when I realised that to source a Brighton fan uh, and someone who's going to know something about V-Borg in Denmark, a team that me and uh, I know plenty of other West Ham fans hadn't even heard of until a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was a challenge indeed. So it's brilliant to chat to you. Hopefully we can have a chat uh, after Thursday's game ahead of the return leg. Uh, give a little bit of insight on a bit of a reaction from you and and some looking ahead as well. Just quickly then, as we always do, give us a score prediction. Thursday night, Europa League round one of the uh, of the playoff or the first leg of the uh, the playoff round. Um, I am qu- quietly hopeful, but at the same time, uh, I, I know how big a test this is going to be. So I, I'm going to say two uh, one West Ham. Um, with Too the traveling su- traveling supporters getting something to cheer about, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 what you want, really, isn't it? Even as a West Ham fan, I wouldn't begrudge them that. Well, look, Henry, <laughs> it's, uh, it's absolutely brilliant there. Henry Nichols from football in Denmark.com. You can find if you want to follow Henry on Twitter, it's uh, at football in DK. Uh, get on over, Henry. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. 